No, 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 it's fine. I just want to pick the brain of you. I won't interview you because basically you've got a helicopter in the box back from the company and that's what we're doing all day. We've got a report in the helicopter. So, you know, we're just going to put what we get on air. We're just going to put it on air. We're just going to put it on air. We're just going to put it it's very nice to meet you and um, we are in Oxford Sea and Change Flood. My name is Dr Chris Huntingford and um, I work at the Natural Environment Research Council Centre for Ecology and Hydrology. Um, I'm not an expert in flooding or hydrological change on the ground, but um, what we do work on is we spend a lot of time looking at output from uh, the Hadley Centre, uh, climate change scenarios. And what we do know is that most GCMs, that's global climate models, are predicting a change in extremes for certain parts of the world. And the United Kingdom is one of them. So in this strange situation that we're predicting that we're going to have wetter winters, uh, drier summers, and yet here we are in the summer experiencing quite a major hydrological event. Some work that was done recently was looking at these global climate models and taking output as a sort of rather like a rectangle around northern Europe and then that was being used to force what's called regional climate models. These are very high resolution cloud resolving simulations. Again a simulation made by the Hadley Centre and uh, when we looked at this we find that we do predict an invigorated hydrological cycle and more extremes in rainfall and that we might well see what is a hundred year return period for back to uh, one in 20 years, one in 10 years. Uh, all quite alarming stuff and I think that the thing we need to remember about climate change is there are many other places in the world that uh, experience uh, climate change, uh, experience hydrological extremes such as we've seen here. And the question is, well, why can't we cope? And I think the thing to remember in all this issue about climate change is that most countries have adapted uh, to be sort of in alignment with the climate they expect and not necessarily what is changing. Um, I think we need more and more research into this. Uh, we need to know exactly how warmer ocean temperatures create high evaporation, how that affects uh, the cloud base and um, how that then translates into rainfall. A combination of things, we need base, further basic physical understanding. This could be things such as just taking samples from the atmosphere, running aircraft through cloud formations and getting the fire physics better. And we do need higher processing power so that instead of in our climate models at present, which is just we sort of average a cloud function, we actually have individual cloud resolving simulations. And that will give us a handle on how well um, things might change into the future. Uh, and what we can expect and that's the only way really we can deal, deal with this. Um, obviously there's the policy issue that if we reach um, the United Nations framework on climate change states that we've got to avoid dangerous change. Uh, the, the, the planet needs, a, just society in general needs to know what level that is. Uh, but before decisions are made like that which affect um, economies around the world we need to have the best physical understanding so we do have to plough on with um, trying to understand climate change and other aspects of the environment. Now, I can't stress enough, we can't say that this particular event is due to climate change. It would be very wrong to do that. There have been past events like this. But what we do need to do is get a handle on the changes in the frequency of this sort of event and uh, how countries may then adapt. Okay, thank you. But I, I don't know, my simple position about this is that I'm from Colombia and it's sad because all the time you can see this kind of situation there. You see it there all the time in yes, Colombia. Yes, yes, and we don't have the, uh, uh, the proper uh, option to cope this kind of situation and it's terrible. Yeah. And uh, for the reason I was thinking Okay, uh, that is happening now here, but here is not the problem that we are coughing all of the time because it's terrible because this kind of people is really poor people. And it's not only to feel that uh, you are having 
a water into your house is uh, like to uh, lose all, all time. And you are 